The original Xbox, released in 2001. Now I personally never owned one because during this generation I was locked in with my PS2, but I did have a cousin who had one and sometimes I would go over and play some Halo with him. Now I'm not gonna lie, I loved my PS2 but I was a little jealous that I couldn't play Halo, I mean the game was great. But luckily, years later, in today, I get to go back and experience all of the games that were exclusive to the Xbox, and believe it or not, there were quite a few. So let's fast forward to today in 2025, and emulation has improved a lot, but the original Xbox has been a more challenging system to emulate, even though its hardware is similar to PC. Things that make it difficult are the undocumented custom chips, a unique operating system layered over a modified Windows 2000, and tight software-hardware integration. All of these elements make reverse engineering the Xbox complicated and time-consuming. So in 2025, there are really only two ways to emulate the OG Xbox. The first one being CXBX Reloaded, that was released in 2018. The emulator has made progress in running a select library of games at playable speeds. But I will say, it's far from complete compatibility. Only 16% of Xbox games are playable from start to finish, 49% launch in-game but will have issues, 26% boots, and 8% of games will crash when you try to launch them. But I will say, your big Xbox games like Halo and Jet Set Radio Future are functional. This emulator also supports LAN emulation and online play using tools like X-Link. Now for what I know, development is still going for this emulator, which their focus is on improving accuracy and expanding the range of playable games. CXBX Reloaded is available on Windows and Linux. The next emulator is called XMU, released in 2020, which is a fork of XQMU. This is the emulator you want to be using. The main reason is the fact that it has a higher compatibility with 84% of games playable. So yeah, that's a big step up from CXBX Reloaded. XMU also supports LAN emulation over a network. This emulator allows you to save and load your game instantly, making it easy to replay tricky levels or sections in a game. It is pretty easy to set up, but I do think that CXBX Reloaded has a better looking interface. XMU is available on Windows, Linux, and yes, my Mac users can use this one as well. Now for my fans of multi-system emulators like RetroArch that want to emulate Xbox, well, bad news, there's no Xbox cores. And honestly, I don't think we are ever going to get them because I don't think the demand is high enough. OpenMU on Mac doesn't support Xbox emulation as well. And I'm sorry to my mobile gamers, both Android and iOS do not have compatible Xbox emulators as of now. If you do see one on the Play Store, be aware because most likely it's a scam. Now if you use the multi-system emulator RetroBat, then XMU is built in. It's not a core, but it's the real thing. Which is a beautiful front end by the way, if you haven't tried it, then you definitely should. And last, for my Steam Deck owners or any handheld PC devices, they do support XMU. At the end of the day, Xbox emulation still has a ways to go before it's at the level of, say, PS2 emulation, but it will get there. Now, one thing I want to say is that I do respect Microsoft for staying silent on emulation of its consoles, unlike Sony and Nintendo. Plus, Microsoft has done a good job themselves with backwards compatibility of the original Xbox, adding a lot of big OG Xbox games to Game Pass. So if you want to emulate the Xbox, I recommend sticking with XMU over CXBX Reloaded. And also, if you need help setting up either one of these emulators, then check out my setup guides in the description below.
The Xbox 360 was released in 2005. Now, I never owned the original Xbox, but I did get a 360 when it first released. The main reason was I wanted a next gen console at the time and I wanted it now. The PlayStation 3 was still a year away and I was a PlayStation fanboy back then, but I couldn't wait, so I settled for a 360. But it didn't disappoint and I was happy with it. Well, until I got the red ring of death, two years later. But let's go ahead and fast forward to today in 2025, and now we can experience the Xbox 360 through emulation. But don't get too excited because just like the first Xbox, the 360's compatibility is a challenge as well. With there only being one mainline emulator for 360, that being the Xenia emulator that can only run around 18% of the 360's library with little or no issues. The good thing thing is though, this emulator is still in development, so that number will grow over time, but the developers aren't really doing a good job with keeping us informed on updates with the compatibility. With that being said, the Xenia emulator still needs a lot of work because it's resource intensive. That will require you to have high-end hardware to get a playable performance. Then once you do get a decent performance in a game, most likely you may still experience some issues such as crashes and controller input problems. But last year, we did receive a huge update for Xenia that didn't even come from the official team of developers. And it didn't even have anything to do with games, but instead the interface of the emulator. See, before December of 2024, this was one of the hardest and most complicated emulators to get set up because most of your settings had to be adjusted in Notepad. But now we have Xenia Manager. This just simplified everything from installing game patches to adjusting your graphics settings, your controller settings, and even allowing you to load your games into the emulator while adding cover art to them. Now with the current state of Xenia, there is still a lot of work to be done, but I congratulate the team for what they have managed to do so far. Plus, you actually have some big titles that are fully playable, like GTA 5, Bioshock, Red Dead Redemption, Skyrim, and a few Call of Duties and more. Also, in 2025, a big development was made outside of Xenia, that being the introduction of Xenon Recomp, a tool that converts Xbox 360 executables into C++ code, allowing for native PC ports of games. This offers enhanced performance and compatibility compared to regular old emulation. The first successful application of Xenon Recomp was the PC port of Sonic Unleashed, showcasing higher resolution resolutions, unlock frame rates, and ultra-wide support. I find this to be really cool and a new way of game preservation. Anyways, back to Xenia. This emulator is only available for Windows, with the official site saying Linux builds are coming soon and there are no talks about Mac support. It can also run on Steam Deck, ROG Ally, and Legion Go. And if you are a retro arch user, well, there is no core for 360 emulation. So as we all know, as long as the developers stay at it with Xenia, I can see this being a really great emulator in the next few years. If you want to set this emulator up on your PC but need help, then check out my full Xenia Manager setup guide in the description below.